Good day, Raging Raptor here, and I welcome you to the, my first impression of the British Light Tanks on the live server. Today we have the Setter and the LHN TV. Well, for the Setter, it's not really a first impression anymore because I kind of finished this tank in already today. Although I had to use 600 free XP, except for the other stuffs, which I free XP, I free XP all three things like here, but that was it. But no, I just want to talk about those two tanks in general and say my two cents about it because I didn't really do that yet. And I have to say, after now playing the LHM TV, I have to say it looks like the setter is going to be the best tank of the tank line. And this is quite simply because of the fact it has a decent penetration on standard rounds, decent penetration on premium rounds and has HE with good penetration. That's it. Those are, this is the only thing. That's, that's the only thing which makes this tank good, in my opinion. The rest of the tank is... Wow. It's just wow. In general, I played today 70 games, which is too much, to be honest. And I played 36 games in the setter, and I played 16 games in the LHM TV. And it's... Well, again, the setter was a decent tank. Like, I had my fun here and there. The biggest problem with this tank is that its mobility is poo-poo. Its 58 km per hour top speed is just super atrocious when you compare it to something like Type 62, which has 60, or the AMX 3075, which has 61, or the EBR Hotchkiss over here, which has um, even 70. Okay, this guy is a wheeled vehicle, so it doesn't really count, let's be fair there. But this tank, 58 km per hour, man, that's slow. That's incredible slow, because just think about it, the Cromwell drives 64 and not 58. Those 58 km per hour top speed, they can really ruin your day when you're trying to get into a position quickly. And that's pretty annoying. And another annoying part is that the tank has a very um, small amount of shells, 45, uh, 35 to be precise. That is not a lot. And it happened to me on several occasions already that I got pretty darn close on, well, losing or not having all shells anymore or being, don't have any shells at all anymore. The biggest thing or the biggest issue with this tank is that the gun in general just sucks. Like, the accuracy and aim time is not too bad, but the rate of fire is poop. Seriously, it's a big pile of poop. Especially if you compare it to a similar caliber gun, the gun of the Hotchkiss EPR, you will see that well penetration rates are worse, yes, but you get 35 more damage on standard rounds and a whopping 95 damage more, excuse me, 85 damage more on premium, um, on HE rounds. That is ludicrous and ridiculous. And it makes the EBR Hotchkiss just so much better when it comes to doing damage. And please don't forget, our EBR Hotchkiss over here has a, a DPM and it's... And it used to be said that wheeled vehicles have bad DPMs. But this one has 1800, while the set has 1600 with rations, while the EBR doesn't have rations. That's stupid. And it's genuinely annoying. Yet, I still kind of think that this tank is, it's okay. Like, you can work with this tank. Another thing, however, is it's shit fuel range. 370, you can't tell it else. Those two tanks have 390. 370, for a tank which is, which should be the best scout, it's, it's shit. Excuse me for the language, but it's, it's, it's just straight up that. When you, when you think about it, T71DA has 390. This guy over here, 390. Well, meanwhile, our dear old British chap dumbles around with 370. Here, our tier 8 one even has, has also 370. Okay, but he has a bigger and more punchier gun, depending what you like to take. And lastly, our Ruski Tanku. Well, not lastly. Where is it? It's LTG. Just have to find it quickly. There he is. He has 360. But for that, he has a much more potent gun and actually armor, which here and there can bounce some things. And the Germans with the Spick, Spick 1 has 390. So in general, you are on the lower end of the view range, even though Wargaming actually says, oh, they have so good view range. Excuse me, but that's just a straight up lie. 
Again, I didn't play it with the stock gun or any of the guns and it looks act actually atrocious because it's basically the same gun you have on the Crusader, which is garbage poop, bleh. And it has like 12.8 rate of fire, which is super meh. But yeah, I needed 50, uh, no, 35,000 free experience. Yeah, those are 20 roughly. And another 15, yeah, 35,000 free experience to get this tank to where it is now. And you don't need the tracks, uh, but you don't need the, the engine, to be honest. It makes it, it makes a difference, yes, but to be honest, 25% 25 HP total on ratio is good enough. So lastly, have a quick look at our statistics. 36 games, 64% win rate and 900 damage on average and 969 damage spotted on average. This is pretty decent. It's actually not that bad, to be honest. It's actually, again, it's decent. But then again, this tank I am worse at, and you can see we have roughly the same amount of assistance damage, but we did less damage. The WZ, I didn't play it for long, is also worse. But now let's have a look at the EBR, a tank which I played recently. And we have 2000 combined damage. So the EBR Hotchkiss, even though it has worse fuel range and so on and so forth, it's a much more potent tanker or much more potent tank to play. Makes more damage, it, it's more active in the game play. My T70 ADA actually doesn't even have the spot, uh, excuse me, the damage spotted on average because I didn't play it in ages. So yeah. Anyway, the setter, again, it's okay. It has its weaknesses. It could use a tiny buff maybe on um, shell damage, like maybe 150 and 200. That would be great. That would make this tank perfectly fine. Made, made it fun, made it competitive and not poop. Another small thing which I have to say is super annoying is how slow this tank turns. Because this little fella and the LH MTV, they can't turn their tracks simultaneously. You just have one track turning and turning and turning and turning and it's making it super slow and sluggish and that's annoying as well. Because sometimes you just want to quickly turn around in a bush to be ready, set and setter to go away. But yeah. Enough about the setter, let's look at the piece of poop which the LHMTV is. The gun is incredibly potent. Like, if you ignore the rate of fire, it's a great gun. It's basically a gun, It's it, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the guns which has the highest penetration rates for even medium tanks, with only being surpassed by the Lorraine. That is huge. Like, this, this is ridiculous for a light tank. And... It makes you use barely any premium rounds. And this is really cool because it reminds me of the old ELC AMX BIS. However, the shit alpha, excuse me, but 230 is simply shit when you compare it to the HWK 30 with 240, lighter Kampfpanzers with 240, with the roughly same, well, with roughly the same amount of caliber. It makes it just feel so bad. And look at the penetration of HE. By the way, the Setter has the highest HE penetration of all British light tanks, which is absolutely insane. I'm sorry, but this is absolutely insane. It makes no sense. It, 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 I, I don't see it. I don't see the sense behind that. But yeah, here we have now the LH-MTV, a tank with 1,700 DPM, while other tanks have 2,600, 2,000, 2,000. 2,500, 2,500, another 2,200, 2,500, and an HWK with 2,400. And I think a lot of you already saw this, but this is how it looks. On average, it's around 700 damage less on DPM. It's stupid. It's... You can't carry with this tank. You, you seriously can't carry. The problem with, like, I, I, I can get a shit DPM. I can get it. But make the aim time faster. So it's actually, you are actually quicker in aiming in to deliver those crucial shots you have, which are so, 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 so sluggish. Um, give it a little bit more accuracy. Because just look at this ridiculousness. This EBR 75 FL10 has the same amount of accuracy but a one second aim time. This is almost two. This guy over here, well he has 47, okay, but we don't have a crew in it and we don't have Wentz in it at the moment. So, yeah. The Wentz and the crew can push it down a little bit. But 
bear freaking in mind that this tank, the LHMTB, is as accurate as the T92, is less accurate than the HVWK30, which acts a much more potent gun because of better DPM and <laughs> it's it's aiming even faster without using vents. <laughs> honestly. No, seriously, honestly, I had some great games in the LHMTV and it makes, it is fun to play, especially because you know you are a piece of poop. You are a liability for your team usually. But Raging, it's such a good scout. Excuse me? No. 380 few range? What are we, an ELC even? No. Seriously, even this tank over here has more few range. The EBR obviously doesn't count, but this guy, 400. 400! He has 380! It's, it's the same shit fuel range as the LT432, but the LT432 has a ridiculous armor and a ridiculous gun. And the HWK40 has even 410! Seriously, what happened there? Why is it so shit? It's... <laughs> we can even try to compare it with the Sandlack. And the Sandlack looks like a balanced tank. I don't know what happened there. I know you already saw it from, from Zircon, from Sir Fosh. But I just simply have to say my gifts to that as well. See? 400 meters. Great. Why does the LHMTV has to suffer so fucking hard? <laughs> and another thing which is making this tank really annoying to play, in my opinion, is its meh top speed. It still can turn on the spot. It still has only one track to roll. The absolute horrendous accuracy on the move and during turret traverse. And sometimes you have to move a de decent chunk here and there, a tiny touch to correct because you have not really good gun depression and you have no gun elevation whatsoever when you're using from behind. You can see you have an oscillating turret. And give me a quick second, I can most likely have a look over here and show you it from how it looks like in, in game. Y see, there you have 10 degrees, which is great. You have all around 10 degrees. Here you even have 15 degrees of gun elevation, which is great. But suddenly it gets smaller and smaller and suddenly you have 4.4. <sighs> it's ugly. It's genuinely ugly. Also, you are the, the, the you are fodder. You are fodder to wield vehicles. As long as they don't hit your turret, you're fodder to them. They're going to smack you in the face. This tank, this tank seriously needs 240 alpha. It needs an HE with at least 90 millimeters or 85 millimeters of penetration and 300 damage, and it needs a quicker aim time. Then this tank would be fun and balanced. And it would still have shit DPM, it still has shit fuel range, etc, etc. And for the people which are going to tell me, oh, Raging, you are not using binos even though they are passive scouts. Yes, I know, but I just like to play them a tiny touch more aggressive. I don't want to camp 24-7 in a game. Because this, quite simply, makes it so that we are going to lose. And a 38% win rate is nothing I am happy about. Even though I have 2.8k combined damage on this tank. With 1.7k spotted and 1.1 on average. Okay? Like, I'm confident in saying, and this sounds like a dick move, I'm confident in saying I know how to play my light tanks. But this tank is just like, you can't carry. You simply cannot. I had a 3.3k damage game, but... What gives? What gives? The, the damage came too slow. I just survived incredible long. And you can't give us an argument, oh, it has so great penetration. Rather, I lose part of this penetration for actually having a decent gun damage and the ability to, to carry. But it's probably not going to happen. I don't know. Uh, the G-Saw is the next one on the line, which I will get tomorrow through just simply grinding. Um, but... I'm most likely not going to get the big gun, except I'm, 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 I'm going to grind for the gun, but I'm not going to get it like straight away. Like I'm not going to waste free XP. I'm going to get the engine, um, which gives it a huge boost in power to weight ratio, because you can see it's like 100 HP horsepower more with a tank, which is six tons light. 
and I'm going to get the tracks. And then I'm going to just grind the gun because, well, the Manticore is not anything better either. Seriously. The tier 7 has more AG penetration than the fucking tier 10. And that is a joke. That's an absolute joke. Seriously. It's Those guns need accuracy, aim time, and proper HE. Then they can actually work. Other than that, don't bother. Even if you're a British fan, I'm sorry, but don't bother. By the way, 25 shells. They, they, they are gone pretty fast as well when you try to carry. When you try to do damage on maps where you can't really spot. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry for this rant-ish video, but I just had to get this out of my chest. It's stupid. It's, it's, it's really stupid and it's actually... It's, it's frustrating. Like... It's not, re it's not really infuriating, it's just frustrating. Because those tanks, they have potential. They can be great. They could be great with minor adjustments. Again, give them HE, great, good HG, give them a snappier aim time and give them a tiny touch more accurate gun. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. Then you have fun and great tanks. Fun and unique tanks, rather. You have a tank here with more penetration than almost every, any tier 8 medium, which is ridiculous. Mm. But that's its trademark. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Tier 10 tank doesn't even get good penetration and any four other tier 10 me lights have the same caliber and alpha. Yeah. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Raging Raptor. Here, some rage for you. And I'll talk to you all later.